On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Matt Boldy looks at expectations and pressure as more opportunity. Hey, this is Matt Boldy, and you're listening to Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. We are your team each and every day, and we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked and Wild, Matt Boldy joins the show to talk about how he is feeling heading into the season, why confidence is a big part of Matt Boldy's game, and more responsibilities. Matt Boldy says, bring it on. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed Wild Media member and host of Locked and Wild since 2021 and uh this is the big get we were teasing this week for locked on wild uh big thank you to matt boldy for joining the show as you heard in the open uh now we uh we got a little uh little piece to uh to add to the intro courtesy of uh of matt it was great to talk to him and uh really excited to share his thoughts on his teammates, on John Hines, on uh, getting ready for the season. And once the interview's done, we will talk about a couple of the key themes that Boldy talked about um, as we get set for the 2024-2025 season. Now, this was a phone interview, and so uh, I just have a graphic that I'm going to throw up while the interview is going on. And so uh, we'll uh, we'll get you right into the uh, the main course for today's episode. Here's what Matt Boldy had to say. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the first question, which I'm sure is one that a lot of Wild fans are curious about. Uh, how are you feeling heading into the uh, season opener against Columbus? Yeah, I feel good. It's uh, feel good to, to be healthy and kind of ready to get out there with the guys. Um, obviously, it stunk not being able to, to get any preseason games in, but uh, I feel ready to go. I'm excited. Yeah, most definitely. As you mentioned, uh, not the season that everybody was hoping for last year. How much determination have you seen from the other guys on the team, from you yourself, to make sure that uh, this doesn't become a second straight season with no playoffs? Yeah, it's, uh, I think everyone kind of uh, has high standards for themselves and for each other. So um, as much as it, it's done last year, it was a could be a good thing for us i think just just teaching us what kind of what it takes and and the extra work that we have to put into to get back into the playoffs so it's uh something that that everyone wants wants to achieve and then to, to get there and play well as well and then kind of keep going you've had a chance to uh, to work with john hines for just about a year now he came in last year after uh, after dean evison was let go what what have you noticed from Hines from his coaching style from the the strategies that he used? What what are some of the the differences that you've seen since he took over? Um, I think things have have been going well with uh, with Hinesy, and I think just uh, the more time we're with him, um, the more we kind of can can develop his system and the system that's that's going to help us win the most and, and kind of play with each other and kind of be predictable. So I think. Um, I think the more we're with him and the more he's able to kind of install the, the stuff that, that he believes in and, and our other coaches believe in, it's it just kind of gets better. So um, things have been great. I mean, I, I think he's, he's a great coach. He's uh, got a big USA hockey background. So I, I've played for a lot of coaches with, with similar styles and ideas and stuff like that. So it was uh, it was a pretty comfortable transition for me uh, kind of joining and adopting his system. Excellent. Uh, you had a chance to be part, uh, a pretty big focal point of the uh, world championship team for Team USA with John Hines as head coach. What was that experience like being able to uh, to be part of the roster that had you know all the best players from Team USA going toe to toe against uh, some of the best from around the world? Yeah, it was cool. Um, I had been to a world championships before, but I 
I joined late, um, but it was really cool this year with, with a lot of guys that I played with at the national program, um, obviously against a bit in the NHL, guys that, that I knew, didn't know. So it was kind of nice to, to, one, just get to know the guys and, and play with them and learn from them. But uh, it was pretty cool to, to be there and, and kind of represent USA and everything. Let's talk a little bit about your game. Obviously, some great results through the first few years of your career. 30 goals two years ago, just about got 30 goals again this past season. How do you feel your game has evolved since becoming a uh, full-time player for the Minnesota Wild? Um, I just think confidence-wise and in kind of mindset. Um, you know, it's hard coming in 20 years old and you got guys that, that are established and, and have scored for so many so many years in the NHL and have had success. It's it's hard to, to shoot the puck when they're, uh, when they're just standing there, so... Um, I feel like sometimes you, you defer to them and and you pass it off. I think just as I've gotten older and played more, I think just my confidence in myself and ability to, to make the play myself or shoot it, I think that's, that's gotten better and something I still want to work on. As you have uh, improved and have grown as a player, obviously that comes with some more expectations too. Uh, how do you handle some of that pressure as being now one of the focal points of this wild offense? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really call it pressure. I think uh, I want to be on the ice. I want to have the puck with my stick. I want to make plays. I want to make a difference. So um, I think more of the pressure comes from, from yourself, just, just wanting to, to succeed. And I think I've always been like that. But um, like I said, I want to be that guy that, that's in that situation. I don't, I don't want to just watch someone else do it. So we have uh, a lot of really good players and be someone that, that people look up to and look to make a difference is, is something that, I, that I've always liked and enjoyed. So you're somebody who would replace that word pressure with opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, like I said, you, you want that pressure. You want that, that responsibility on you to, to go out there and, and have an impact. I like that. Uh, you've had a chance to be pretty regular line mates with uh, Jewel Erickson Eck and Kirill Kaprizov as well. Uh, down the stretch last season how much did you enjoy being able to play with them and uh how, how much how much does that kind of amp you up to be able to say all right i'm i'm going to war these are my two guys that uh that we're going to try to go and beat the opponent every night yeah it's, they're, they're special players i think uh, everyone sees that every night they're they're just so good they're so strong win battles make plays can score they they do it all so uh, being able to play with those guys, on a, whether it's on the same line or, or just in the same lineup every night, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, just looking at uh, a few other things here, you know, the power play is a huge piece of this uh, this team's success, and you're a big part of that as well. Uh, what sorts of things when you're out there on the ice during the power play, where are you looking to position yourself? What are you looking for for those opportunities to uh, to try to go grab a power play goal? Yeah, I think uh, when our power play is kind of going well, we're, we're moving, we're creative, but we're, we're simple and we get pucks back. I think that's the biggest thing you see in these, these power plays that, that are the best in the league, top three in the league. They, they get the puck back three or four times and you get a tired kill and then something happens. And something pretty kind of works out where you can make a, make a great pass and kind of shoot it into an empty net. But I think uh, just creative, playing off each other, um, kind of using our brains and stuff uh, to, to find, find spots to shoot or make plays or open up uh, space for someone else. So uh, I think being able to to play with Kirill and, and Zuki and, and Aki, they're, they're so smart, so we always have, have kind of different stuff rattling around in our heads. Just, just sharing and talking with each other about it is, uh, is great. And like I said, it just, just opens up a lot of opportunity. Jared Spurgeon back on the ice. uh Missed some time last year, and obviously that's a tough loss, not only on ice production wise, but leadership wise. How big is it to have him back and healthy and uh, and ready to help lead this team for uh, 2024, 2025? Yeah, he's such a big part of our team. Um, I think just just the human being he is, the leader he is, um, the calming presence he has in our locker room, um, and he, he's an incredible player too. So to have a guy back like like that in your lineup, it, it makes a huge difference. Um, 
helps a lot of our, our other D out that, that were playing crazy big minutes and stuff like that. And you need someone that, that can go out there, power play, penalty kill, five on five, and, and have a huge impact. So he's, uh, he's definitely someone we look to a lot. I got a couple more that were submitted by listeners. Um, when you were going through as a youth hockey player or in some of the early stages, did you ever get any piece of advice that stuck with you throughout, you know, high school through college all the way up to where you're at at the NHL today has there been any big piece of advice that you've gotten that has uh, stuck with you um I think I've gotten a lot I think uh had a lot of good people around me hockey players human beings everything that that have taught me a lot I think uh big thing that, that I used to always talk about with my dad was just having that confidence in yourself to like I was saying before, to, to want that pressure and want that opportunity and, and try to thrive in it, um, you know, and, and staying humble and, and kind of letting people tell you how, how you're playing and stuff like that. So um, I think confidence is such a huge part of the game, especially as, as you move up in, in different levels of hockey. So uh, the more you're able to kind of find that and, and ride with it and be confident in yourself, it's, it just makes you such a better player, I think. Absolutely. Um, I had another listener ask if you've got any personal goals or team goals that you have set for this season. Are you a goal setter or is it more so like, let's see how things go, say, for the first month of the season and kind of reevaluate and uh, and see where things are at? Um, I think it depends. Depends on the situation. Um, you have to set goals for yourself. Um the back of your head whether you're you're writing them down if they're just sitting in your head but um i think i i have a, an expectation on myself to, to go out there and it's i don't like setting goals that that kind of cut you off once you reach them either sure I think you, you you aim high and and you expect a lot from yourself then then the better off you're going to be um you definitely want to reach to achieve your goals rather than and just set set lower goals and achieve them and be happy with yourself. So, um, like I said, it depends depends on on the year, how you're feeling, stuff like that. But I think uh, I've always been someone to, to kind of stretch my goals and, and reach for for the highest possible uh, kind of performance I can. I guess. Yeah, you you set a bar, you get there, and then you see, hey, can we go a little further than this and uh, just keep things going that way? Exactly. Yeah, I agree. What uh, what is your pregame ritual? Do you have anything in particular that you just have to do before lacing up the skates uh, to get ready for a game? Um, I wouldn't say have to. I think uh, I have a pretty relaxed pregame ritual. I mean, I like to kind of hang out and stay loose and play soccer with the guys and stuff like that. I have my, my routine that, that makes me feel good and ready to go. But, um, you know, I like to stick in before the game. Um, stuff like that, but uh, but there's nothing that that I have to do, or or it's the end of the world. I'd say that. Sure, like you don't have to tie your skates a particular way, or you're no. you're. <laughs> um, off the ice, I uh, I know you're a pretty good golfer. I know you bowl. Is there a sport that you aren't um, avid at uh, <laughs> while you are just uh, taking some time away from the ice? Oh, uh, basketball. <laughs> Starting to learn that that's that's majority of hockey players. We uh, we have a basketball hoop that, that we shoot at before games, and there are very few of us that that are actually good. So uh, that makes me feel better. Who is who's got some sneaky good basketball skills on the team? I I know a couple of years ago there was a video, and I think Ryan Hartman can ball a little bit. But anybody else that kind of has some underrated basketball skill to their game? Uh, yeah, RC can shoot. Um, I think first first overall pick would be Johnny Merrill. Um, okay. Big, big, tall, um, can shoot, get to the rim. You know, he's uh, he'd definitely be my, my first choice. So. Uh, final one for you here. I had somebody who is curious about, uh, obviously you got a chance to play for Jerry York at uh, Boston College. Do you have a favorite story from, uh, from having him um, as your coach for a couple seasons? Oh, um, I don't know. I think uh, being able to play for for Coach York um, was special. I think growing up as a as a kid, going to the games and um, 
getting to meet him a little bit and, and stuff like that as, as a young kid before he even knew who I was at all or on any radar was, uh, was special. I mean, just the legacy he has um, that he built and, and stuff like that. Um, it, it was special. I don't think there's anything that, that sticks out crazy big. Um, I just thought he, he was so good at, at building a team and building kids into men and, and making sure we were doing the right things, whether it was in our dorm, whether it was uh, um, at an event or, or anything like that. I thought, uh, I thought he did an unbelievable job with that and kind of building the team and into one unit rather than a bunch of individuals. Absolutely. Uh, hey, Matt, this has been great. Thank you so much for uh, taking a little time to help us preview the uh, start of the season. Uh, we'll definitely have to do this again uh, as the season unfolds. And uh, best of luck to you for uh, for a great season and best of luck to the team. Thank you very much. Good talk. And talk to you soon. Stick taps to Matt Boldy. That was great. And uh, we'll we'll get him back on at, uh, at some point during the season. But I do want to jump into a couple of themes that uh, seem to really ring true with Boldy in that interview. Uh, we'll start first uh, in the next segment by talking about pressure and expectations being just more opportunities. That's on the way as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You don't have to have 90 million tabs open like I do when I'm tracking my fantasy teams. FanDuel keeps it all succinct and all in one spot. And best of all, you can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Doesn't have to be a winner. Any $5 bet will get you $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That is FanDuel.com. Head there right now and get this deal before it's too late. That is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We've got a lot coming up for you here to kick off the NHL season. We'll have a uh, crossover episode coming up later today for you with uh, Jay Foster of Locked On Blue Jackets. A really interesting discussion there. Uh, talking about how this Columbus team is going to uh, try to maneuver the season with the tragedy that uh, happened this offseason to Johnny and uh, Matthew Goudreau. Obviously expecting it to be an emotional night tonight at the XL Energy Center. And uh, we'll have a uh, look at the expectations for the team. Denny is uh, going to give us a look at what to expect from the Minnesota Wild roster. So that'll be a nice uh, pregame treat for you as well. Then, of course, after the game, we got you covered with the Lockdown Wild postcast. And we will have our regular season debut of the Three Things Recap, taking a look at John Hines' postgame comments and uh, breaking down the three most important pieces of what Hines had to say in uh, the game against the Blue Jackets. But I want to circle back to a couple of things that Matt Boldy talked about during the interview. And the one that I thought was the, the, the one that I think struck me the most and impressed me the most was him talking about, you know, as those expectations mount for his performance, you know, you you can look at a couple of different factors here. Number one, the fact that he is uh, now in his uh, seven by seven, the contract extension that he signed. Now that you're making $7 million a year, the expectations for your performance rise and you are expected to hit a certain level of performance, even as a... Um, early 20s forward at the NHL level. And for a team that has playoff aspirations this season, you know, that that ratchets the pressure up uh, even one degree more. But the fact that Boley uh, said point blank that he relishes those opportunities, he wants to be the guy out there on the ice 
is the exact sort of thing that you want to hear from somebody that's going to be a big bol- a big building block for this team going forward is you know it's it's more opportunities to produce more opportunities to step up and you know he he brought up i think another important thing that doesn't get talked about a ton but it is it is a tangible part of the process is when you start off at the NHL level you really have to kind of feel out where you fit into the overall scheme the the overall scope of the game not only in the league but also even on your own team and being a a wide-eyed 20-year-old coming in and uh, seeing some of the players that I'm sure Boldy watched as he was uh, was growing up and was was going through the high school and the college ranks. It's intimidating. It um, I, I can certainly equate some of that to when I get a chance to talk to players, when I get a chance to talk to people that have been covering the team forever. Like as somebody who is you know working my way up in that aspect. There's an intimidation factor to it, but at some point the switch flips and you look at those situations as opportunities for you to prove that the money that you're making, the positioning in the lineup, it's opportunities to prove that it's all right and that uh, the wild were justified in giving Matt Boldy the extension that they did. And that his presence as, you know, he's pl- he's going to probably play second line for a- at least the beginning of the season. But I think with what we've seen from Matt over his first few seasons in the league, he profiles as somebody that I think will be higher up in the lineup uh, as he moves closer and closer to the prime of his career. Um which hopefully will take place alongside Kirill Kaprizov. But I just loved that Boldly went right to that notion of, I don't look at it as pressure. I don't look at it as, you know, expectations. It's all opportunity. That, that was something that just, it's exactly what you want to hear from a young player. That is going to be a key piece of uh, what this team does. Uh, over the next few years. Now, I know I'm sure a lot of you saw the discussion that Bill Guerin or that uh, Craig Leopold had with Joe Smith and Michael Russo about the five year plan. And uh, don't worry, we'll be breaking that down for you here over the next couple of days. Uh, Alex and I, I think, will really dive into that for Monday's episode. But, um, you know, Matt Boldy is going to be a big part of that. As this team gets closer and closer to true Stanley Cup contention, Matt Boldy is going to be an integral piece of making that happen. And uh, he is ready for the challenge. And you don't say stuff like that as a 23-year-old if you don't have the confidence to be able to back it up. And so we'll finish by talking about the notion of confidence because. I think there was a little something to that in Matt Boldy's season last year that uh, maybe led to that slow start, uh, but led to a massive finish to the season. We will uh, finish with that on today's Matt Boldy edition of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by Game Time. It is fall. We've got college football, the NFL, the NHL is back underway. The NBA is close behind. And so there are no shortage of opportunities for you to enjoy seeing your favorite teams in action. And sometimes the most fun experiences with seeing your favorite teams play are the spontaneous ones where you line up a group of friends and say, hey, Wilder playing tonight, let's go check it out. And game time can help make the ticket buying experience as stress-free as possible so you can put more of your energy into tailgating, into grabbing a nice meal before you head to the arena, 
all the things that you should be devoting your time to, Game Time is here to help. And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, big thank you to Matt Boldy for joining the show today. Fun interview, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did uh, recording it here. Uh, felt like the perfect way to kick off the 2024-2025 season. We uh, we are big fish hunting here at uh, Locked on Wild, and so hope that was uh, hope that was enjoyable. I loved some of the responses that Matt Boldy had to those questions. You know, the um, the opportunity one just really, really impressed me. And uh, I I think it speaks to a key theme for players, as Boldy talked about himself, confidence. I, I think having the confidence in your abilities, in your shot, in whatever you're doing out there on the ice, if you don't have the confidence to back it up, your performance is going to slip. And so... We know what happened at the beginning of the season. Boldy was uh, was he got banged up, and I think that led to a little dip in confidence because you know you're not able to do everything the way you're accustomed to. Depending on the type of injury, sometimes you have to overcompensate in other areas. Sometimes you just can't do the things that you are uh, supposed to do out there on the ice, and so. Anytime that situation happens, the confidence drops. And I think it's no surprise. And I, I don't know if this is exactly how it played out, but I would imagine that once John Hines took over, he probably had a little bit of a chat with Boldy. Bill Guerin also may have uh, have factored into that as well about just look, just go out and be Matt Boldy, like go out there and do your thing and play your game. And as the numbers start to pick up, the confidence continued to uh, expand for Matt. And we we talked about quite a bit the numbers that Boldy put up from the time that John Hines took over to the end of the season. And you're talking not only like one of the highest point totals and goal totals on the team, but you're talking about a guy who was inching his way into the um, into the leaderboard for the entirety of the NHL. And so obviously, Boldy is a player who really thrives on confidence, as many of us do. Um, so to hear him talk about that and how you just, you know, you just have to be confident in what you're doing Anytime you're out there on the ice is uh, is just great, and that's just another piece of the uh, of the puzzle for a young player. That, as I said, he's going to be a huge piece of what this team tries to do going forward. Uh, all told, Boldy finished in the uh, from November 27th to the end of the season. Boldy was 28th in the NHL in points, uh, with 61 in the final 63 games. So. Pretty clear that the confidence was in full flow um, once John Hines took over. Uh, that was more points than Elias Pettersson, more points than Kale McCarr, more points than Brady Kachuk, Quinn Hughes, Steven Stamkos, Mika Zibanejad. Uh, you name it, he had uh, more points than a lot of players from that point to the end of the season. And so, you know, how do we frame... The expectations for a player of Matt Boldy's stature, uh, taking into consideration where he fits in the lineup. Um, and I think the other thing, too, is when you look at the expectations that a player puts on themselves for their performance, 
Uh, I liked how Boldy phrased that as well as you set some goals, but it can be a situation where you may put them in a position to exceed pretty easily and then reassess. Like you don't want to put something so far out of reach that you can't get it, but it's very, it's, it's something that a lot of us do. I've done this before, but it's something that a lot of us may do from time to time. And you set a goal and you just, you see how, uh, how far above that you can go. It's like, it's like if you're lifting weights, you may say, okay, I'm going to do this lift four sets, 10 reps. You may feel like you can do four sets of 10 pretty easily. And so then you say, okay, can we, you know, what are some things that we can do to make this more of a challenge? Up the weights, up the reps, um, things along those lines. And some of the stuff that we've seen from Boldy, um, in fact, the uh, the practice after uh, which Matt and I chatted, he was on the ice for, I think, something like, 40 minutes after practice was done and earlier this week when he was first getting back into the swing of things him and Kirill were on the ice for like 90 minutes after practice was done those are the kinds of things that turn you from a young player with talent and promise to a cornerstone to a backbone of a team and look as long as Kirill Kaprizov is here He's always going to be the face. He's always going to be the Batman for this team. But as we've seen, anybody that is as big of a Batman enthusiast as I am, Batman can be great in his own right, but Robin is pretty important too. And this may be something that factors in to Kirill's ultimate decision to stay is how effective of a complimentary piece can a guy like Matt Boldy be? And I keep going back to when the Winnipeg Jets knocked Kirill Kaprizov out, courtesy of Logan Stanley, who, ironically, uninjured reserve to uh, start the season for the Winnipeg Jets. So I don't think we'll see him in the first Jets matchup of the season uh, coming up on Sunday. But that might be part of the the process here, too, is when Kirill was out of the lineup, Matt Boldy was the one that stepped up to handle the primary scoring. He had 13 goals in that month of March. And so that speaks to a guy who is kind of learning where he fits in the uh, the hierarchy of this organization from a scoring standpoint. But the key is too, and we've we've talked about this at length. The everydayers that listen um, to this show on the daily, we we've talked about it's great that Boldy stepped in to uh, to fill in for Kirill at that point. But there have been some instances in which you know the goal scoring dries up a little bit, and so the confidence, but also getting to the point where you know, okay, now these are starting to become my shots. These opportunities are starting to become the ones that I take to uh, to try to help our team win. And the fact that Matt Boldy directly acknowledged it in that uh, in that interview leads me to feel better about my prediction that we're in for what could be a monster season for Boldy. He's he's healthy going in. Him and Jewel Erickson Eck have some great chemistry together. I think even if Marcus Johansson is subpar productive in that wing spot. I think him and Erickson Eck can put goals on the board by themselves plenty. And so, look, I, I've i been a pretty big Matt Boldy supporter over the, uh, the last few seasons since he came to the Minnesota Wild. And uh, you're, you're starting to hear those things that get you excited that as good as he's been, a 30 goal scorer already third highest scorer in his entire draft class at this point. And those guys have all played a bunch of games already. And for him to be third in scoring amongst his entire draft class, it leads me to believe that uh, we may be seeing some things from Boldy 
over these next few years that we may not have thought possible. And for a guy making $7 million a year, that excites me a lot because that's something that you know Kirill Kaprizov is paying attention to. And if Boldy continues on his current trajectory, that's that's going to be a heck of a one-two combo for the Minnesota Wilds going forward. So again, big thank you to Matt Boldy for joining the show today. Uh, can't wait to have him back on as the uh, season unfolds. And uh, just uh, just makes me that much more excited about what he's going to bring to the table this year. That'll do it for today's episode. Again, thank you to everybody for tuning in each and every day here to Lockdown Wild. Make sure to hit that like button if you have not already and subscribe if you have not on YouTube so you don't miss out on any new episodes or any of our live postcasts right after the games are done. But if you listen on uh, any of our favorite audio platforms as well, we thank you for your support. Also, wherever you listen, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild a huge part of your day. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.